When you take your sword in hand, you must learn how to stand. It's not all that hard. Today, let's talk about the guard. friends, Lauren here, and today we're going to talk about guard positions. Very important for our sword fighting, and we'll even use a staff to talk a little bit more about other weapons today. But guards, stances, wards, uh, custodia, whatever we want to call them. There's a whole bunch of different ways to say it, but basically it means how you stand to begin your moves in a sword fight. So I can stand in, this is the second ward or second guard or the second custodia of uh, 133 Walpurgis Sword and Buckler, for example. I've got the buckler out, not all the way out, but I'm creating this zone of defense, this almost triangle kind of line, and I've got the sword above my right shoulder, of course it's called Humero Dextrale, which means right shoulder, and that is my starting position. I could have other starting positions as well. I can have the sword tucked under. This is the Subrachia. But whether we're talking about long sword, army sword, master, staff, spear, dagger, there's always a position that you want to ready yourself in as the fight begins. And there are also positions that you'll end up with during the fight. And knowing how to react from a guard position that might happen mid-fight, as well as a starting position, is really going to help with your sword play. You don't just go, eh! You don't go, eh, no, you have to watch what you're doing. You have to move from a position and then recover to a position. So you're going to make your attacks, for example, and then you're going to recover to a guard position. It's a very important concept to learn. Now, most of the time, a lot of that we do teaching long sword and you learn a lot. So we're gonna to switch to that now. Put the army sword down. Put the buckler down, the long sword, with knees bent, remember, we have our knees bent, we are focused on our target, and the sword is being held in fluke, or plow. So if we're looking at Lichtenauer tradition from Germany, we've got the pommel above the knee, our elbows aren't out, they're kept in, so we're not winging it, we're in, we're ready and we can deliver most of our cuts from this position quite easily. I can do a cut one, I could do a cut two, I can do a cut three, I can do a cut four. All those cuts can come from this guard position. Of course, we also have shoulder von tog and high von tog from the shoulder. I can do my cuts. Remember, I don't really have to do much other than move the sword a little bit, make the cut, and come back. And that's what guard positions help us do. So those are two very common starting guards in our Lichtenauer tradition. So here I am, the plow. I could also be in the ox. Good if you want to come out with a thrust, you can cut from it. But there are other guard positions like Albert, the fool. The sword's pointed down. So if I move back a bit, we can see. Okay. And that might mean I'm trying to entice my opponent to come in. It's called the fool because I'm trying to fool my opponent. Other than that, it's really foolish to use if I don't know what I'm doing. So I can cut upwards or defend upwards and then follow up with an attack from that position. But there are other guards that I could use and I could end up there mid-fight. Like for example, if I end up with my sword here after a cut, let's say the opponent jumps out of the way, I should know how to react from that point. I shouldn't be flustered. So understanding that there are guard positions like a boar's tooth where this is where my sword is down below and I can recover with a cut from that position, help. So guards are not always just to start. You're gonna say, well, this is a really awkward position to start my fight from. Why would I ever stand like this? Well, you probably wouldn't start your fight from certain guard positions, but you might end up there after a cut. So you think to yourself, when I'm doing cutting practice, if I cut downwards with the sword, and it ends up in a low position. I could practice defending and attacking from that position. And that's what guards help us do. If we're talking about 
the masser, for example. We don't use it with two hands. Remember, we use it with one hand. My guard position could be something that looks like this. Look, we can barely even see the sword on the camera because it's pointed forward. We foreshorten it. We take away that depth perception. We make it sneaky, and I can switch the guards. And having good flow between the guards so that instead of doing a big, oh, and between switching sides of the guard, you notice that I'm keeping the point fairly central as I transition. And guard transitions are a really good exercise. They're a great way to help part of your warm up. And of course, from here, I could cut. I can have other guard positions with the messer. Of course, moving it around. And they even apply to other weapons. So in the staff, you could have this as your guard position. And look, look at that reach that I've got. But I'm keeping the staff centered, pointed up. My, it's covering my body. So the top of where the point is right now is above my head because I'm trying to make sure that I'm well defended. If I need to change guards, well, I can simply switch hands, switch sides. And it's quite fluid that way. So one hand moves up, the other hand moves down. I notice I'm starting, my hands are faster than my feet. So I want to be in position. So I start with my hands because there's more to do with my hands. And it's a little, we're going to have some problems. I mean, this is six feet of staff, 1.8 meters, and uh, it's only eight feet of ceiling. So. It's a little tricky to do, but there are other guards that you can do. I can be in this upper guard. Here I am protected up. I can be in this lower guard. I can switch sides. Just four basic guards with the staff that I can quickly do. And that's just an idea that there are positions that you start in. So we talk about stances in video games, movies, things like that. Um, what we're really referring to are these guard positions. So we want to be somewhere with the sword. We want to be ready to attack from that position. Or we want to be somewhere mid-fight where we have that moment and we know I want to just continue the fight. Or I can make the decision to recover and I go back into a guard. And that's one of the most important things we want to talk about. When you're fighting, you don't just keep going. There are moments where you can stop and recover into your guard and then go again. So you don't have to be successful. You don't have to sit there and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut until you actually land the blow on the opponent or constantly attack and defend, attack, defend, attack, defend. You might need a second to spring back, reset into a guard and be ready to go again after that. Then I can attack, try to thrust, shield strike. Oh. I can step back in position slide a little bit on the floor in here. That's okay. Here I am. I'm in guard position. I'm in my sh shoulder guard, my second ward, second custodia of uh, sword and buckler, and I can go from there. And that's what guards are all about. It's just a way for you to take a position to know how you're going to attack and defend from that point. They're extremely important. It's good to know several guards. And if we go back to Longsword for a second, how many guards could we have? Well, for example, we could have a plow from the right. We could have a plow from the left. We could have an ox from the right, an ox from the left. Notice how I switch that. I'm keeping the point forward. I'm not doing a big arc. I want to keep the sword in front of me in case someone does try to spring to attack while I'm switching my guard. I can defend myself. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four guards that we've done. Shoulder from one side, shoulder from the other side, seven, or I'm up above my head. What else could I have? Eight, there's a tail guard, that's nine. I can tail to the other side, that's 10. I could do a long point, that's 11. Either way, it's fine. I can have it closer to the body. Just a couple hands worth of space between the pommel and my stomach. Okay, I can have various boar's tooth. One, two, 
And then I can switch legs, three, four. I think we're up at 16 already. You're not going to remember all of these specifically to say, okay, I'm going to pick this guard and be in it, and that's my choice mid-fight. No. A lot of this has to be instinctual. You'll learn your guards. You'll learn to flow from one guard to the other. So you can transition between guards. So plow, to ox, to plow, to alber, to plow, ox. Or maybe I should say flug, because that's the German word for this, and ox is ox. O-C-H-S in German, O-X in English, right? But I can easily go from here to here to here to here to here to here. And the camera just decided it doesn't want to focus anymore. There we go. Thanks, camera. So that's just a brief little look at guard positions. A very important concept in learning your basics of sword fighting. Something that isn't as glamorous as being able to throw these nice cups with their perfect edge alignments and certainly it goes with your footwork so you need we've mentioned guards briefly in the past few videos but yes with your footwork can come a change of how you hold the sword you're not always going to stay with the same position of the guard move it around get your opponent thinking is my attack going to come from above oh no maybe it could come from below oh no it's above below oh now i'm going to threaten my opponent my opponent has to deal with my sword to get to me oh maybe i can launch from the oh no and i'm just going back and forth learning to switch your guards as you move your feet is a great way to help you not only get good fitness routine out of your sword fighting but it also allows you to really understand where you can deliver your attacks from and your defenses from and it keeps you tight in ready to go it's good practice and if you can remember even just three or four guards and know how to cycle through them if you were sparring against someone combining that with your footwork that really steps up your sword game it's not just going to be i'm going to move back and forth like this constantly i'm going to switch the guard as i switch my feet i'm going to be really responsive to what my opponent is doing i can use my guard to match the opponent's guard as well that's going to let me do a lot better if i decide to spar against someone else Anyway, that's it. Just a brief little look at guards. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and all the other YouTube things. And I hope that you will have a fantastic day and stay on guard.